is Rolling Stone Music Now on Volume, Sirius XM 106. Hey, I'm Brian Hyatt, and this is Rolling Stone Music Now. I'm in the studio with Andy Green, and we're talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and this year's class. And we talked about Radiohead and Roxy Music and all sorts of stuff. But the, we actually have uh, a member of The Cure you spoke to. Yes. And it's a, it's a, but define this member of The Cure's varying positions. It's and, a sort of complicated. Yeah. This is Lowell Tolhurst. And he was the founding drummer, a childhood friend of Robert Smith. That He was the drummer between 77 or something and 81. Then he was the keyboardist from 81 till 89. He was credited on, on disintegration, but he didn't actually play on it because he was drinking too much. Then they fired him. Then he sued them in the 90s. There's a nasty lawsuit over the name rights, but now they're friends again. And he was a guest keyboardist on their 2011 tour when they played the old album straight through. And his name, his real name is Lawrence, because it's weird. Like his name, his his nickname is literally LOL. Yes, which is and uh, confusing. But yes, yeah, it was it's before, pronounced LOL. Yes, it's before. Yes, yes. So anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's hear what he had to say. Congratulations on the big news. Oh, thank you very much. It's been a, been a bit of a surreal morning so far for me. Yes. Yeah, so walk me through it and tell me how you first learned about it. Seven thirty. My wife tapped me on the shoulder and told me she got a big surprise. Tell me, I thought maybe maybe she's pregnant. You know, maybe I'm going to be a father again. But, you know, mm -hmm. there it was, and, uh, and she told me. So yeah, ever since then, the phone and, and everything else has been going off. You know. Yeah. So tell me your first reaction. Just how do you feel in that moment? Um, I, I, it's, it's going to sound strange. I think. I think. Uh, you know, last year I was I was on the road with my book for the, the whole year, and I met so many Cure fans so, and so many people that that you know music had affected. It felt felt like it was like the perfect circle that it had come to a point where, uh, not not to feel you know like I, I didn't assume that it was going to happen, but I kind of knew some you know like I had a precognition about it all that it was going to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was just like, oh yeah, okay, that's really that's really cool, and I and I, I just felt very very grateful, you know, in that moment. I think. Do you think all you guys are going to play together? I don't know. You know, I'm sure I'll hear from Robert sooner or later about that. And uh, you know, if we do, we do, and if we don't, that'd be fine. I'll be happy to sit there and you know, watch what's going on. Yeah. yeah, I would love a super jam on Boys Don't Cry with everybody, just past yeah. and present, Cure all playing together. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what? Uh, a lot of people have already, I've been looking at my you know, social media, of course, a lot of people already suggested that, and they've all suggested that either we do that or we, or we play. We used to do like, this really long sort of improvisation at the end of uh, every set, which we sort of named Forever, and they said, you know, you should do Forever with everybody in the band playing all together at once, which would be, you know, quite horrendous probably, but yeah. you know, it could be fun. So how often do you speak to Robert Smith these days? Um, well, that's probably the last time I heard from him was probably about you know, three or four weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, we're, we're in contact from time to time, me and, me and Simon, and I say uh, Michael I talk to quite a lot, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and Pearl Thompson, you know, from time to time, and Boris Williams. Yeah. So, you know, I, I keep, I keep in touch. I'm, I'm sort of like the glue for the whole Cure family, I think, really. Yeah, it's a pretty wonderful thing because I'm sure at the height of that lawsuit that that you didn't think that would happen again, right? Right. You know, uh, and one thing I've I've learned, you know, because uh, in a matter of weeks I will be sixty, which is probably more surreal than finding out, you know, we're in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I've 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 learned that that life is not really linear at all. You know, when when you're a young man, you think. Life is like, okay, I get over this mountain, then let's get ready to climb another one, and let's get ready to climb another one. Life's not like that at all. Life is a sort of, uh, I found, t is is a set of concentric circles, you know? Yeah. And uh, you sort of jump from one to the other, but, you know, in the end, you, you come around to the same things, the same people, the same emotions, and, uh, you know, the cure's no different, which is probably why it's gone on for so long, you know? Yeah. 
And so how are the 2011 shows for you uh, on an emotional level? I, I'm sure being back on that stage and playing those songs again was very intense. Yeah, well, I mean, that was actually part of the, the impetus for me to to write Cured, you know, because it was such a, a, a an amazing emotional, it was, it was a transcendent journey, really. To, you know, like the first show down in uh, Sydney, um, at the Opera House was was really like an out of body experience for me, you know, the, and uh, it was it was it was beautiful. And I mean, you know, I can't really get any more sort of uh, tiffified than that, really, which would probably you know would shock my uh, punk rock self, you know. But <laughs> it was, you know, but there again, I always think the punks are, you know, they they're really actually just hippies in different clothes, but. Right. Um, no, no, it was it was wonderful, and it was really a good a good point in life to sit and do that kind of stuff, and just you know reacquaint ourselves with each other. So you know, hopefully we'll do something like that again in the future. So that was uh, Lowell Tolhurst, right? Yes, <laughs> it's a name I I just don't feel comfortable honestly with that name, mm-hmm. but it's uh, who was both the drummer and keyboardist of The Cure, and then subsequently sued for the name, and now everything's cool. Yes, uh, The Onion had a great headline: Rock and Roll Hall of Fame rescinds nomination after discovering The Cure was voted in as cruel prank by popular kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which it is. There is something. It, it's. There's something really cool about the Cure getting in. They they were such a they, they represent such a particular slice of music and pop culture. I love them. Yeah, and in the '80s, it, it, it was always the favorite band of the real loner kid at your high school. You know, and on the on the other hand, and you know, I I love the when I talked to Robert Smith, I talked about the almost insane bipolar. Uh, dichotomy of his music mm-hmm. like the incredible the incredible lows and the joyous highs of of like um friday i'm in love uh which is my one of not only my favorite cure song but one of my favorite songs of all time right which is from the 90s it just shows how long they lasted they've always been good i saw them live a few years ago and they played for what seemed like four and a half hours they played like every song in their catalog mm-hmm. they tried to beat springsteen's record recently but but they mistimed it, so they played four hours and three minutes. But but they thought they beat four six, and he walked off stage furious when he found out. How was he even aware of Springsteen's record? That's he was, crazy. He was playing Mexico City, and somebody told him he go screw it, I'm gonna beat Bruce, <laughs> and then he tried so hard, and he just missed it by accident. I love the idea that like sweaty, pasty Robert Smith could oh, could just as easily outpace like like insanely fit like Superman Bruce. Yeah, a Cure concert is a is a, is a strange thing these days. They never end. I mean, he plays almost four hours at these shows. I think it's because he is, uh, you know, he's sort of like Drake. There are many cures, you know. There, yeah. there, there are, there are many, you know, he's he's exactly just to be Rob Rob Sheffield for a minute. But yeah. I mean, it is it is true. Like there's, you know, the the fact that there's the disintegration side and the other side is just it, it's just awesome. And and he's also a super underrated guitar player. And and let's let's hear Friday. I'm, I'm in love. Also, the fact that he, you know he writes all these love songs about his wife, and yeah, he, he's it's such the a, same wife for forty years. Yeah, he's the most normal monogamous guy in rock, and look at him—it's it's, it's a great. I, I I love all the the weirdness there. And then another thing that's amazing that people don't know, uh, it used to be widely known, but Robert Smith and Morrissey have always hated each other. Yeah. There's a terrible rivalry there. Well, it's just that Robert Smith is a nice guy, and Morrissey, who I love, is a huge dick. So it's not surprising. Yeah, it, but it is fun. I mean, people might think. I mean, they are sort of in par- there There's something. There's obviously a kinship there, but it's just funny that they despise each other. Well, and the Cure got so much more popular, and they stayed together. You know, so the Smiths would actually be an obvious candidate for induction now that they're going in this direction. But he's yeah. he's been espousing some troublesome views. Might uh, might serve as a, an impediment to people voting him into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I would definitely think so. He's very unpopular at the moment, though the Smiths are hugely popular, but not amongst Hall of Fame voters, and they haven't existed for so damn long. If the Cure can get in, the Smiths can get in. I think I, I think they can and they should, but 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 the Cure on their last tour, they did three nights at the Garden, sold out. They remain a massive band in this country. If the Smiths were to reunite, I imagine they could also do three nights at, at Madison Square Garden. But yes, anyway, of course. 